Welcome to Evacuation. Coming up, there's calls for celebration at Castle Farm. Everyone gets a big surprise. And it's goodbye to wartime Britain as the evacuees go home. Oh, I miss you. Two weeks ago, we took six boys and six girls back to the 1940s to experience life as wartime evacuees. To escape the bombs during the Second World War, city children were separated from their parents and evacuated to the countryside to live with complete strangers. It's been a tough couple of weeks for our modern evacuees. <laughs> living on a farm in wartime conditions. Oh, I was a gas cloud, I'd have killed you. One girl left after just three days. But for the others, it's been a life-changing experience. I'm kind of, like, appreciating what I have now. Now their time at Castle Farm is about to end. It's 7.30 and the evacuees are waking up to a very special day. But this morning starts like all the others on Castle Farm. Over the past two weeks, the boys and girls have had to get used to Auntie Sue's early morning wake-up calls. Even a cold wash outside has become second nature. Good scrub. What, you're really clean. But Castle Farm still has some surprises in store before their final day as evacuees is over. Food we are about to see is made. The Lord make us truly grateful. Amen. 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 After their usual country breakfast, Auntie Sue wants everyone's attention. Apparently there's going to be a special announcement on the radio at 9 o'clock this morning. In the spring of 1945, it looked like Britain and her allies were finally winning the war against Nazi Germany. The Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, was expected to declare victory any day. And that day came on the 8th of May, when the British people gathered anxiously round their radios to hear him announce the end of the war. Yesterday morning, at 2.41 a.m., the German High Command signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Force. Long live the cause! Well, Mr. Oh, yes. yes. It's over! Oh, yes. Well, that is fantastic news. Our evacuees have just heard a radio announcement declaring that war is over. And this day in 1945 became known as VE Day, or Victory in Europe. And there were massive parties and celebrations all over Britain. And what better way to celebrate than getting rid of all of those air raid precautions? Well, because there's no longer a war on and it's over, we don't need to worry about bombs going off and shattering the glass. Gas mask. All of them. The war is over. I'm so used to having a gas mask that, like, I'll just really keep it on there. I can't really take it off. Can you go and remove? All the bomb precautions we put into the Anderson shelter and bring them all up to me. I think I'm going to have to make two trips. Everyone at Castle Farm is joining in the countrywide celebrations, and Auntie Sue has an extra special job for Chelsea Thompson. Let's let everybody know that war's over. Good girl, keep pulling. Let all the village know. Everybody! Woohoo! 
Bells like this one here at Castle Farm were ringing out all over Britain. And Chelsea's bell ringing is signifying that all of the evacuees are going to go home. I'm going to really miss you when you go. Oh, I miss you too. Oh, I don't know what, what am I going to do without all your children? When Chelsea first set off for Castle Farm, <laughs> she had no idea she was going to have to face some of her worst nightmares. I'm scared of the chickens packing your legs. She hated the whole thing. Wouldn't live here if you paid me a million pounds. But things began to look up when Chelsea was given an orphan calf to look after. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. And after two weeks on the farm, Chelsea is a changed girl. There's been stuff I thought I could never, ever do in my whole life, but I've been able to do it. And, like, for instance, I thought I could never milk a cow, I could collect, hold a chicken, feed a calf. I thought I'd never be able to do that on Earth. There'd be one in a million chances. But guess what? I'd done it, and I'd done it brilliantly. When the war in Europe ended, the real evacuees went back home to the cities. And now our boys and girls' thoughts have turned to leaving. I can't believe I've lost the last two weeks without any makeup or any good food, and we've, we haven't even had chocolate on like ever. So it's sort of dawning on us now that the hours are getting shorter and shorter, and that you know the time we're leaving is coming closer and closer. I, I don't actually want to go now. If I had a choice between uh, staying here for another two weeks and going, I'd stay here for another two weeks, honestly. Oh, it's been two long weeks and we finally get to go home and see my mum. But I also feel sad because I'll be leaving Mr and Mr. Well, Auntie Sue and Uncle Brian behind. Okay. But one person our evacuees won't mind saying goodbye to is their strict schoolmistress. If our evacuees think that Miss Young is about to declare an end to lessons, they're very much mistaken. And it's gonna be quiet. Miss Young. It's a bit sad we're going to school today because the, we've just won the war. It should be a time of celebration. I'm not really looking forward to school because I thought if like the war's over, we'd have to go, but we do. It's not like it's unfair because I think she might do something quite nice because it's the last day and I'm sure she's not like me. Since arriving at Castle Farm, and now. Miss Young's stern 1940s lessons have made a lasting impression on our evacuees. Standing! And now it's up to me to dig out of you information that you should know. Where on earth did you get an answer like that? I don't really like that Miss Young. She's a bit strict and moany. Look at me at the back there. You have not learned this poem. Is there any one of you sitting here able to do that sum? You have wasted my time and doubtless my effort. Good morning, class. Good morning, Miss Young. Sit down. Luckily for the boys and girls, Miss Young isn't in the mood for her usual lessons today. I have had an idea. And the idea is this, that as we are about to leave the farm, we ought to leave something behind in a box that most sums up to you your life here as evacuees, that perhaps 60, 65 years on, other children might find. The evacuees have only five minutes to each find something special to place in Miss Young's time capsule. Where's he taking that bin? <laughs> <laughs> We have the great pleasure of putting everything in the box. You're the teacher now. Show us and tell us what this means to you. I have picked um, the Union Jack flag because um, it is the country what I um, live in and it makes me remember all the um, sacrifices that happened in the World War II. I've got a gas mask because it's what, like, we used 
while we was like at war and hopefully someone will find it and see how lucky they are to be safe and how brave he was through the hard times. I have picked one of the things that I bought and it is a pencil because when a pencil is used it works hard and when I'm on the farm I work hard so I bought a pencil. I picked my first place badge because um, it was um, the day I um, won something and I was uh, quite proud of myself. I chose an egg because uh, while I was here I caught a chicken to be killed but an egg represents a new chicken's life so to everyone that dies a new one is born so that's why I picked this one. And the lid goes on for posterity. It has been a wonderful privilege to have the time and opportunity to teach you. You have been very good learners. I won't forget you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, here we go. Our evacuees have put all kinds of things in here. I've got a daffodil, lovely, an egg, gas mask, and some ribbons from Sports Day. It's all going in, and we're going to bury it for the children of the future to find. The 1940s school lessons may be over for our evacuees, but there's still plenty of work to be done if they're going to celebrate the end of the war in style. We're going to celebrate VE Day. And we're going to have the people from the village coming in. We're going to have like a little sort of party. So girls, yes, you're going to make cakes with me this afternoon. <laughs> no, boys, you're going with Mr. Rivet and Mr. Patrick. No. Come on then. You ready, boys? Boys, oh. come on round the front of the house. No. We're getting ready for the party. The boys and girls are in for a big surprise. The party guests won't be people from the village, but their mums and dads. Harry or Rich, just get hold of this bell with Josh. Before the celebrations can begin, there's lots to do, and the boys are really putting their backs into it. You all right? It's quite a change. When they first arrived, they preferred playing to working. <laughs> I don't know why I'm being lazy. Just can't be bothered. Not liking it, it absolutely stinks. You do more talk than ever you do work, and get your back into it. Now it's work, 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 and no morning. What we'll do, we'll have two rows of bales with a gangway up the middle and a gangway down the side. We're hosting a party and um, us boys have to um, make it all um, look really good. Well done. In the kitchen, the girls are baking cakes for the party. First to get stuck in is Natalie Hancock. Two weeks ago, this fast food fanatic didn't have a clue about home cooking. I'm Natalie Hancock and I love fast food. It tastes so good. <laughs> if I could, I'd have it every day. It's a nightmare to try and go out and sit down and eat a proper meal. Chicken, burgers, chips, chicken nuggets, everything really. On the farm, Natalie had to learn exactly where her chicken nuggets came from. How you kill a chicken is you break its neck. <laughs> I didn't want to look because it was sick, and you made me look. And she struggled to acquire a taste for wartime cuisine. My four rabbits are home, and that one's just died. I can't take it. Are you all hungry? Oh, oh, yes. But in the end, Auntie Sue's rabbit pie won her over. She's come a long way from her favourite burger and chips. The food, that's what I was most concerned about, but... No, it's been really, it's been like fantastic. The food was lovely, mm -hmm. um, but I just can't, I can't go through Regan and Rabbit again. Party preparations over, the children are writing farewell letters to Uncle Brian and Auntie Sue. It seems like only yesterday when they first met. Is it a boy or a girl? Yeah. During the war, evacuees were given very mixed receptions by their new hosts. If there is trouble, you'll be mucking my old horse out for a week. Some were made to feel rather unwelcome. And I don't want any nonsense out of you, Harry, either. 
but others became part of the family in their new homes. The night's girls sleep tight. Don't let the beddy bugs bite. Over the two weeks they've spent at Castle Farm... Swallow it, wash it down with some water. Our evacuees have had a bit of both. How dare you bring sweets to church? Don't wave them about, put them on the plate, thank you. What's the matter? You can call me Auntie Sue and you can call Mr. Rivet Uncle Brian. <laughs> so, what have our evacuees written in those letters? Uh, dear Uncle Brian and Auntie Sue, last fortnight has been one of the most shocking but enjoyable experiences of my childhood. Freaks. <laughs> oh, God, I'm gonna die. Wish you the very best. Love from Richard Hall. P.S. on them. Get you. Oh, thank, you. thank you very much, Dear Auntie Sue and Uncle Brian, <laughs> my life has so dramatically changed and it's all thanks to you both. I am a different person. <laughs> You've both been so kind and understanding and shown me more than I've ever experienced at home in the city. Uncle B, you've been well cool. I respect. <laughs> I have really enjoyed my stay here, but mostly enjoyed picking, picking nettles for the tasty nettle soup. It's quite nice, actually. Thank you very much for looking after me these past two weeks. You really changed my views of life and you really did make me have the full experience of World War II. I thank you ever so more for accepting me into your family and treating me like a daughter. Thank you, Uncle Brian, for teaching me about animals. Thank you, Auntie Sue, for teaching me all about cooking. Miss you lots, Chelsea. <laughs> I have really liked milking the cow and everything, and also I have got a feeling we will meet again, and I will never forget you. Lots of love, Harry. <laughs> oh, Harry. Oh, Harry. <laughs> well, children, thank you all very much, because this all means a lot to me and, and to Mr Rivet. Uh, you're a grand lot, and um, we'll be sad to see you go. I feel really, really sad. Um, but this, it's sort of like knowing that the time's come and they're actually going to be going, and that's it, really. I'm not going to sort of see them again, and I've grown so close to them over the last two weeks, really close, and it's, it's just sort of tragic, really. My parents should be very proud of their children um, to come here um, and leave everything they've got behind them and be on our farm 40 years back. It's been... It's a big, big, big step, and I think they should be very proud of them. The stage is all set for the party to celebrate the end of the war. Well, here come the surprise audience. The evacuees have no idea that their parents are coming to the VE celebration and they're going to be taking them home. Make yourselves at home, because the evacuees have got no idea that you're here. It's going to be great. It's going to be a brilliant surprise. Unaware of their parents' arrival, the children are in the schoolroom, putting the finishing touches to a special party piece. Hands out your pockets. You're not going to be standing like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to now present you... Look ahead if you can. Don't worry. They still don't realise their parents are the audience. Where's our children? <laughs> <laughs> We've got them locked up. <laughs> Rehearsal's over. It's showtime. Now then, I quite look forward to this. <laughs> However delighted they are to see their parents, the show must go on. It's Compare Harry's big moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to sing a song to show our appreciation to Mrs Rivet and Mr Rivet for letting us stay at their house. I now present you the evacuees. <laughs> Nick, Nick, here and a Nick, Nick, there, here and Nick, there and Nick, everywhere and Nick, Nick. 
With a moan, moan, air, and moan, air, and moan, air, and moan, everywhere, and moan, moan. With a sweet, sweet there, and a sweet, sweet here. Here, a sweet, there, a sweet, everywhere, a sweet, sweet. I don't like you here, I don't like you there. I can't eat you here, I can't eat you there. I fuck, fuck you, and I fuck, fuck you there. I fuck you, I fuck you everywhere. With a thank you here, and a thank you there. For the real evacuees, after being separated for six years, a lot of their parents didn't even recognise them. But, well, that obviously isn't the case here, even in those outfits. <laughs> I never really expected my mum to be here. I just walked out the cave and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> did you get my letter? Yeah, I did get my letter. And I've got you loads of chocolate in the car as well. <laughs> you really enjoyed it, yeah? Yeah. Good time. Yeah. You want to come home? I didn't realise how much I would miss him. So I thought two weeks freedom, but after two days, that was it. I started crying. Now I'm glad to have him back. It looks different. It looks different. It's just amazing. It, it's because I haven't seen him for two weeks. I don't. Well, the clothes probably. I've not seen his knees for a while. <laughs> I think she looks absolutely fabulous like that. Oh, why are you fashioning? <laughs> <laughs> no. Can I have a chicken? Yeah, yeah. A chicken? <laughs> Not a real one. You can have one for your tea. <laughs> Not a real one. It's time for the parents to taste the girls' homemade cake. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I love the cream in the middle. Right, that's it. Now the girls are in the kitchen forever. And go on a tour of the farm. Go, go and get in there and bring your calf across. Charlie wants to show off Jack the calf to his mum and dad. Oh. He's beautiful. <laughs> oh, God, look. How old is he, Charlie? Four weeks? Four or five weeks? Yeah. Every morning and every evening, Charlie and Chelsea, that, that was his or their job, to, cut, to go and mix the milk powder up and go and feed their calf. He's a great cowman. Well, yeah. You know, yeah. She, she got out and Richard went and, you know, he would bring her back. He's, they've got a great bond. When Richard first came to Castle Farm, he wasn't exactly the outdoors type. My name's Richard Hall and between you and me, I'm a bit of a computer geek. I love computers because I just like everything about them and I spend about three to four hours on it. That's your right, Richard. But he surprised everyone when he turned out to be a natural-born cowboy. I'm impressed. How well done. I'm absolutely elated. Are you? Are you? Yeah, it's better than winning the lottery, is it? It's fantastic. I can't believe he's been away and he's done so much and we've not known. Well, we have taken 11 city children back 60 years to live as evacuees on a farm, and they have certainly thrived on country life. Some of them had never even been on a farm before. Look at them now. you think they were born here. And it's not just the farm. The mums and dads are keen to know if their little darlings have been doing equally well at school. <laughs> Tia's mum is particularly anxious to talk to Miss Young, and with good reason. I'm not really keen on school. I get chucked out of class a lot by teachers. Usually, if I don't like her lesson, I'll go hide in the bathrooms. I didn't really know that she bunks. But in Miss Young's 1940 school, Tia was a star pupil. If you think you know the answer, rub out the question mark and put it in, Hatton. Very good, Hatton. Sit down. I. Just knew you could, and that's high praise indeed from me. Miss Young had a talk with me, and I really appreciated it because she just told me how that I can do stuff and that I should be really proud of myself. She's come up to scratch. And she realised so, that's good. So well. I've been very, very pleased with her. I'm a real wild one. Wild. It's finally time to return to the 21st century. I own clothes. Normal clothes, nice clothes. It would be good to get back into my normal clothes. They're more comfortable and they look better. I've got face masks and everything. I've got my chocolate. Oh, oh my favourite jeans. I love you. Peppers. I'll take this rubbish out of my hair. 
Oh, I've been good. Swivel. I've missed all my clothes, I've missed my jeans. Swivel. Jeans and everything. And I need deodorant. I feel like a proper person again. Goodbye, stupid old dress. I am alive. Oh, back to the future. It's strange seeing everyone else in like their normal clothes because it like changes what they look like and who they look like. I feel, I feel great. I look great. I'm comfortable. I'm happy. I've seen my mum and dad. I'm feeling great. But the thing is, now I'm leaving my friends, I'm leaving the farm. I'm starting to feel a bit sort of like, oh my god, I'm never going to see these people again. I think I'm going to stay in contact with them. Fingers crossed, I'm definitely going to stay in contact with them no matter what. I love them all to bits and I'm going to miss them all so much. And, but I want to go home now. I, I've loved it here, it's been the best experience of my life. I'm just, I'm just really excited because I've actually done two weeks on a farm, no mum, no dad support. I've actually done it. Richard Hall has conquered 1940s far and I've, I'm, I'm chuffed to bits about it. It'd be nice to stay for a bit because like this is like my second home but I'm so glad I'm going home and it's, it's just been such an amazing experience. It's just I've gone through like a roller coaster ride of emotions and it's just been absolutely fantastic. For the last two weeks, Auntie Sue and Uncle Brian have treated our modern evacuees like their own children. They've introduced them to old-fashioned ways, to hard work and their country life. And it's going to be very difficult saying goodbye to everybody here at Castle Farm. <laughs> Again, don't know where. Oh, Miss Young. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. Miss Young. I'm going to miss your teaching <laughs> methods. <laughs> I just think you're going to give me a kiss. <laughs> give me a kiss. <laughs> Bye. I bet you can't wait to have a little toilet, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I don't need a toilet. Bye <laughs> bye, bye <Thank> trouble. Goodbye. <laughs> Time to say goodbye. Oh. 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 <laughs> Thank you for cleaning my floor. You did them beautifully. <laughs> All right, good girl. Right, Take care. Seven and five, seven. Oh, seven, nine. Oh, my God, oh. nine. Back to the 20th century now. <laughs> See you later. Well, there they go. Our 11 modern evacuees returning to city life. But I tell you, they have had one incredible adventure in wartime Britain. See ya! <laughs>